Alright guys, the moment you've all been waiting for, my top 10 favorite fruits. So I have been to Malaysia, Singapore, Canada, the US, Thailand, Philippines, Hong Kong, and Laos. I've been to eight countries doing these reviews and uh, I've had a lot of different kinds of fruit. So out of all the fruits I've ever had while making this series, these are the best ones, at least in my opinion. A couple of little ground rules here. These are only things that I have personally have had and have made a review on. Like early this morning I ate a peach, that's not gonna show up in this review. The second rule here is that I'm only going to have one fruit Per genus, okay? So I'm not going to make a top 10 where my number 10 is a Gala apple, my number 9 is a Fuji apple, and my number 8 is a Macintosh, and so on, because that would just get boring. So I might talk about other fruits um, as I'm going along, but for each number spot, only one fruit from any particular genus. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it, so let's get this ball rolling. This is a rambutan, this is a polisin, and this is a yellow rambutan. I'd say, like, my whole fruit hunting fascination probably started when I was about 17. I went to New York City's Chinatown for the first time, and I saw a vendor selling lychees. I'd never seen one before, and I got really excited, so I bought some, and they were delicious. Well, I walked a little bit further, and I saw a vendor selling longans. I bought some longans, and I liked those even more. Some time went by, I moved to New York City, and I had my first rambutan. Rambutans, in my opinion, are far better than lychees or longans. Couldn't imagine it getting any better until I went to Malaysia. When I went there for the first time, I saw polisins. Polisins take everything that I like about rambutans and it just kind of amps it up. They are sweeter, they are more flavorful, and they're even bigger. It's good, you know, and because it just kind of gives you more of what you like about this, I'd have to say now this is my favorite soap berry <laughs> out of like lychees and longans and rambutans i like this better than a rambutan for sure it's got it's got more of a punch to it and it looks like a little sea urchin this one i'm very excited about it is a uh langsat is how i think you're supposed to say it i had to blow the dust off of this episode i reviewed this way back in the beginning. I think it was my second episode. It stands as one of my favorite fruits to this day. Not because it's like the most interesting flavor-wise. I mean, they're pretty easy to wrap your head around. They take a, taste a lot like pomelo, but with a little bit of a stronger taste to them. But what I like about them is that they're just like convenient. When I was working in Malaysia, I was there for like nine months, I would just like always have like a little bag of these on hand and uh, just like throughout the day if I'm like I want a snack or something I just grab like a handful of Langsats and and have at it so like they're not you know maybe the most interesting flavor wise but they are uh, one that I I always associate with my trips to Malaysia and it's the one I probably miss the most when I go back to the US because in the US you just can't find these tastes like very citrusy kind of like um like really mild like um grapefruit this is a rose apple i had my first rose apple in beijing long before i was making these videos it just stood out to me as being such a weird looking fruit like a little red bell. I've never seen anything like it before. So it really made me excited to try this for the first time. And I still like it a lot nowadays, but for kind of like a weird reason, I don't like it for the flavor as much as just the all-over experience of it. They're very light, they're very crispy and very watery, 
and they don't have much flavor, just like a very slight um, citrus and floral kind of taste to them. What I like about it is that they are just refreshing to eat, and they're very, like, subtle. And in Malaysia, at least, a lot of people, they'll eat it with condiments on it. They'll put salt and chili powder and plum powder on it to, like, amp up the flavor. And in my opinion, that just ruins them. It takes away the subtlety that they have that I think is what makes them so nice. And these are um, one of my favorite fruits. I really like them. They have very little flavor, but they're very unique and uh, very refreshing. This tiny little one is a yellow dragon fruit, which are extremely rare. I really like dragon fruit. White dragon fruit and red dragon fruit are tasty, they're good, they're satisfying to eat. They're just kind of bland, and a lot of people that have their first dragon fruit are a little disappointed because they look so cool on the outside that you kind of expect them to taste really interesting too. Well, that's not the case with yellow dragon fruit. The flavor of the yellow dragon fruit is like a white dragon fruit in a way, but it's stronger and it is as sweet as candy. But oddly, they're really, really hard to find. I don't know why this is. The only place that I've ever seen the yellow dragon fruit in any kind of regularity was in Hong Kong, and there they were so expensive that it wasn't something you'd be able to eat except, except for like a special occasion. They taste so much better than uh, the white or the red varieties. Get a little less for your money, uh, and the, you know, you get the thorn, so it takes a little more work, and it's a little more dangerous, but it's so much better. I mean, it's, it's like night and day between this and the other two. Strawberry tree fruit isn't something that is sold commercially. Where these trees grow, kids will just kind of like forage for them. Those are some smart kids because this fruit is delicious. Out of all the fruits that I've had, it's probably the most pleasant surprise because I don't typically go for these little teeny berry-like fruits. These, although don't look like much, they have a huge amount of flavor and that flavor is like really unique. It's like milky and sweet and a little like berry-like, a little cotton candy-like. They're just really, really nice, kind of like strawberry Nesquik. That's unbelievable. It tastes like, it tastes milky and like a little fruity, so it tastes kind of like strawberry milk. I believe that this is something called Salaka Wallachiana. Salaka Wallachiana. Love that. The snake fruit that you find in most parts of China and Malaysia look like this. They are hard and crunchy, kind of like a clove of garlic. They have a strong tropical kind of flavor to them, and they will give you dry mouth at the drop of a hat. The Thai variety of snake fruit, which they call sala, is much different, and in my opinion, it is much, much better. The thing with this fruit is it will just sucker punch your taste buds. If you're in the mood for a snack that has a lot of flavor to it, this will do it. I can't think of many fruits that are as strong as this one is. The flavor of Sala is kind of like a mix between a bitter pineapple, a peach, and jackfruit. But in that little package, it gives you the flavor of a dozen fruits. Ooh. Yeah, it's like shockingly like it's an explosion of flavor. But yeah, good. Check out this guy. This is called an Olo Sapo. Olo Sapos have a flavor unlike anything else on this list. The closest thing I can relate this to would be an egg fruit but where egg fruit would be like grape juice, 
the Olo Sapo is like wine. It is far more refined tasting. It has a more of a depth to it. It's got a complex flavor. Egg fruit kind of just tastes like like an eggy sweet potato kind of taste. All those sapos taste like like a custard pie or like an egg tart. It's like dessert. It has a sharp sweet cheese flavor to it. This is good. Mmm. This is really good. First, a little shout out to Flying Fox Fruits for introducing me to this one. The Batanga Tuba is a juicy, tart, little nugget of deliciousness. It has its own unique flavor, but it's reminiscent of the star fruit and the mango. It takes what I like about star fruit and mango and it just condenses it down into a bite-sized package. They are simply divine. Nothing quite like it though. That's that's delicious. This is a Atamoya. Anona fruits are awesome and they are incredibly underrated. Every now and then I'll see a cherimoya or sugar apple pop up at the supermarket and for me those are diamonds in the rough. There are so many little nuanced flavors in Anona fruits and they're a definite must try. Out of all the Anona fruits that I have had, and I've had quite a few, the Atamoya is by far my favorite. It is a hybrid between the cherimoya and the sugar apple. It takes like that nice flavor of the sugar apple, but doesn't have as many seeds. It takes the nice parts of the cherimoya as well, but gives it like a little more uh, texture to it. The combination of these two fruits is just great. I can't recommend Anona fruits enough. It's like a soursop, but more creamy and custardy and sweet. Oh, it's uh, yeah, this is a, a tasty fruit. Ha cha cha cha. Um, so I've got an acha cha fruit. If I didn't make the rule to have only one fruit per genus on this list, my top three fruits probably would all be Garcinia fruits. The most common of these would be the purple mangosteen. And the first time I had a purple mangosteen, it quickly became my favorite fruit. I was naive then. A few years after that, I had a yellow mangosteen. And that was even better. That became my favorite fruit. And I couldn't think how anything could be better until I tried the a-cha-cha -cha fruit. The a-cha-cha -cha fruit not only is fun to say, but it takes what I like about the purple mangosteen, that sweet, subtle flavor that it has, and it combines it with what I like about the yellow mangosteen, which is like that nice tartness that it has, and it mixes them together. Yellow mangosteens are a little bit too sour, and purple mangosteens are a little bit too sweet. But if you take the good parts of both and you put them together, you get the a-cha-cha. -cha. It just has a beautiful flavor to it, and I cannot think of any fruit that I like more than it. After reviewing 125 or whatever fruits that it is, the a-cha-cha -cha stands high above all the others. This one has like a perfect sourness to it. Perfect sourness, perfect sweetness, a nice complex, like tasty flavor. So there you have it. After 100 episodes of me trying all this fruit, these are my favorites. Maybe in another couple of years when I reach 200 episodes, I'll do another top 10 with a revision. But for right now, these are the best in the world. 
Next week, I'm going to change pace again a little bit. I'm going to hold off on the top 10s. I think there's going to be another top 10. But in the meantime, I have a very exciting September. Because September, as you all know, is Mango Month. I'm making that decision right now. So for the next four weeks, I will be focusing on our friend, the Mango. So tune in next week for more fun and more fruit. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.